presented by Kendri Draws. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that I'd like to review with everyone. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. The Q&A session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. Today's panelists are myself, Fahim Niaz, Joanna Brower from Celsius, and Kendry Draws. Before we begin the webinar, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time and would like to know more about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. If you'd like to learn more about Clip Studio Paint, please visit us at clipstudio.net forward slash en or at graphicsly.com. And now, Kendry will go through his methodology on using 3D models in Clip Studio Paint, and uh, we will pass the reins of the webinar over to him. Hello. Perfect, uh, we can see your screen, Kendry. Cool. Uh, so, hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming and thanks uh, to, to everybody that made this possible. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, so I'm Kendry and uh, I'm an illustrator and graphic designer. Uh, and I have a YouTube channel where I share like different tutorials uh, about Clip Studio and especially with 3D models. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be showing you today. Like, you know, you can see here some examples, how you can use it. Uh, I use it to, you know, create characters, uh, design characters, uh, and then you can get even more dynamic poses. Uh, it's a character, some like fan art, like some Final Fantasy character. Uh, some Street Fighter characters. So you can use it in other ways. You know, there's a few more examples here. Uh, so yeah, pretty much I'm gonna be showing you how you can use the 3D models like that. Uh, you can see some characters, Chun Li, Ibuki. These are not my characters. I just wanna make that clear. You know, some uh, some examples and stuff that you can do. Um, so yeah, I don't want to uh, spend too much time in the introduction, so I'm going to go straight into it. <clears throat> uh, okay, so, so let's go first uh, with uh, bringing in the 3D models. So uh, you can go here on the side and you have this material bar, different materials. And you can click anywhere pretty much, and then you can go down to 3D uh, and then body type and pose. So, okay, I'm gonna click on body type and then I can just bring any character. Uh, well, there's a few different ones. So it's like the male and there's a female. Uh, so you can, if you want to drag guys or girls, and there's also the, the older 3D models, which are pretty cool too. Uh, they're a little different. So I feel like the new ones are more like manga style and the older ones more like traditional kind of more, more like human proportions. These are more manga proportions. Um, so yeah, let's say, uh, I just have a character. Uh, the way you bring it in, you click on it and drag the character to the canvas. And that's pretty much it. You drag the character. And if you want to bring more, you got to make sure it's on the same layer, right? If it's on a different layer, then what happens is like the characters won't move together. Um, so, if you want to bring more, you make sure you're in the same layer and you, you just drag them there so they move together. But before we, we go into that, let's just show uh, how you can change uh, the characters. So, 
So I can, uh, so it has this bar here in the bottom and this little square in the corner, that's where you can change the 3D model. And you have the body shape uh, and you got this little icon here with different body parts and that's where you can change uh, your character. You, you click on the arms, you can make it, you know, bigger arms, longer, and you can kind of really make it kind of any character you want, you know, wider shoulders, you know, this is kind of like a strong guy. Um, so you can change it, you know, click on each part and change it to whatever you want. Just drag the, the sliders, you know, you can have big hands or not. Um, <clears throat> and that's for each individual part, body part. And if you, have, you see this little bar here, you click on it and then it changes. So you change like the overall, uh, the whole body, like if you want to be a character overweight, you know, bring it to the right, really, really thin. Uh, I can change it like that. If you bring it down, it makes it more like a, like a child, you know, more like less muscles. Uh, if you go up, then it makes it more adult, so more muscles and things like that. Um, uh, for the girls, it's a little different. It does it. So let's see. Um, and for the girls, if you change the body, everything works the same, like skinny, overweight. But if you go up, you know, you change like the breast size and you know, make them more, more grown up and then more like a kid if you go down. Now that's like the only difference of the male and female. So um, now that's how you can change the, the characters, the different body types and it's pretty cool. And one of my favorite things is this actually, the head to body ratio. So uh, you can change how, you know, what kind of character you have. So, you know, you can make kind of like a cartoony character, maybe make it like three heads tall, click on it, three. So the head to body ratio, you know, it's a different. Or, or like, um, you know, they say the ideal human uh, proportion is like eight heads, so you can, just put eight and then you get the, the right proportions like right away. Uh, so that's pretty cool. You know, if you're designing a character, you don't have to measure too much. It does it for you. So I really like that. Um, something else to it is the height. Like it's not that necessary, but if you're using more than one character is uh, it's good. Let's say I bring another character. And if you have one that is taller, for example, uh, my height, I'm like 172. Uh, this is like in centimeters. Uh, it doesn't really show in feet, but you, know, you can kind of, I guess, uh, make the calculation or Google it, how much is it in centimeters. So say this guy is taller, it's 190. You can see, like, it will show that difference. So if you're putting characters together, you can make them like the exact size that you want. Uh, so that, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. You can change, you know, just experiment, see what you like, all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's see a little bit about the these controls. You probably saw me moving the characters and stuff like that. So the way it works is this three. All right, this is the camera. So the first one uh, moves the camera. Okay, let me go back. Okay, so the first one you can move the camera around the character. So 
Uh, this is like the default, like some, you don't have to click it. You can just click around the character and it still works. Um, so that's the one I use the most. You're gonna be turning the character. If you wanna look from below, from the top, you know, it's pretty good for that. Uh, then you have this one. So let's say the camera is too high. I wanna bring it lower. I can just lower the camera or bring it higher. So it's just like up and down, left, right. And then you have this, this zoom in, zoom out. So you can just click and just hold it. And you can drag down, it zooms in. If you drag up, it zooms, it zooms out. And yeah, it's pretty easy. You just click on what you want to do. You want to move the character or go around. I'm going to zoom in. Yeah, so that's how you can control the camera pretty quickly. Um, something else. So the next one is more about moving the character. This is, you know, you can bring the character up and down. Uh, for example, you see the those lines in the floor. Yeah, that's like the well, that's the ground level. So if a character is flying, you could just drag them up or to the side, you can drag them, whatever. Um, you know, that's pretty much how I use it. And this one is to spin the character like forward. Uh, very simple, this one spins it sideways. Well, I don't use th these two too much. Uh, uh, you can change, <clears throat> you can move them in by different ways. Um, which I'll show you in a bit. But this one, you kind of don't need it that much. Uh, this one I do like uh, is the one that you spin the character. So if you want a character to face another way, you can just turn them that way, or facing each other, or this is really good. And the final one is to move the character in space. So if a character is all the way back there, you know, you can bring them closer. So they work the same way. You just hold it and you drag where you want to put it, spin the character. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much that. Um, that's how you're going to be moving the character and all of that. Um, uh, this I'll explain a little bit, but first I want to talk about like posing the characters. Um, so posing the characters, it's pretty simple. Like, it may look complicated at first, but it's not too bad. Uh, for example, you can click on it and, you know, let's say you get this, there's two ways to pose it. So one way is with these circles. And if you want to use a different one, you click on it again and it changes. So, uh, here I click on the leg, I can click on the little line. <clears throat> and you see that it turns yellow when I hover over it. So make sure it's yellow before you click on it, because if not, you're gonna miss it, right? And then maybe hit something else and then that's not what you want. But make sure it's yellow and then you can just click and hold and you, know, you can easily uh, bring the leg up, click on the other body part, do that. And the cool thing is that it moves uh, depending on like how the body actually moves. Like this one, uh, this joint only goes up and down. So you only get that line. So uh, it's not like you're gonna turn it or expand your leg like that, like a weird way. It moves pretty much how, how the real body moves. So you can kind of move it like that. <clears throat> Um, and you don't have to start like from, from scratch. Uh, what I like to do is, uh, kind of use, uh, <clears throat> some of the poses that the program brings. You can go to here, entire body and you have a lot of poses. So let's say I want to have somebody sitting, I can look for something like that. And the way you do it is like you click on the pose, you drag it and put it on top of the character. So, you know, 
that's a we can add a new post so I, I don't want it to be like this but you know it gives me a, a good start so let's say I want to cross the legs or something you know, click on it spin the leg this one bring it down yeah stuff like that and there's different ways uh different things that you can use for the uh, posing so uh this one this this thing here you go to windows and all size view uh i'm not sure if this is uh for everything i i know i'm using the ex so i know the ex has it for sure because <laughs> um but I, i'm not sure if all the other ones have it but it's this thing that lets you uh see the character from all the different sides so i can see here from the right from the back from the top and it makes it easier to pose you can just click and see how it looks let's say i want okay let, let's say I'm looking at the character from the side it looks fine but then when I look from the back, you see, oh, the leg is kind of like going to the side. Like I maybe want it to be more straight. Uh, you can you can see that really quickly with that and kind of just adjust it. And whatever you click, it, it moves like the whole character. So this is really useful to pose. Uh, it will po you can pose a lot faster with this. Um, so you can change it and uh, you will change it here too. So that's a pretty cool way to pose faster. Um, something else too that you can use to, to pose is the uh, pose scan, which is like a new feature. Uh, you can go here, you can enter the little square. Most of the things are here. so. Uh, before it used to be that you had to go through like a, a lot of menus or here on the side and you can still do that, but uh, it's better just to click here. Everything's here, you know, the lighting, camera, pose. So I'm gonna go here, pose, pose scanner. And let's say this guy kind of jumping like that. Uh, you see, and it's not completely like exact, but it gives you a good start. So, you know, you can make it a little better. If the guy's jumping over a fence, you, know, you can adjust the hand or whatever you need. Um, so that's a really good way to get started, like posting the characters. Um, so, Let's talk a little bit about the other way of posing, which is with the circles. So the circles, uh, you can just hold and like drag them. And it's, it's pretty good, but I, I, it's not as precise. It, it's more like for small adjustment. Uh, if you wanna be more precise, you gotta use the little arrows. So these arrows, this one's for up. So if I want to go up, I just drag this, you know. If I want to go forward, I, 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 you know. so you have a lot, a lot of control like that, like to move. And it's not it's not really about moving the joints. It's more like where do you want this body part to be? Like okay, I want it to be up here, and you know, things like that. And my favorite part about this is like this one. It has this is where the character is looking. So if I want the character to look up, you know, you see, you can see the head move and it looks very like natural, like how, you know, looking to the side, looking down. So, you know, you can kind of go back and forth and change it, change uh, to just move the joints. See, yeah, there I missed it because I didn't hit the, the yellow. So wait for the yellow and then you can move the joint uh, yeah. So it's pretty, you could go into that and then change it into 
uh, the, the circles, the move like that. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, this, that's how you can control the character. And let me just move into uh, something a little different. It's not too different, you know. So let's say you post a character. Uh, uh, something else you could do is the perspective. So you know how you know a big thing about drawing is like the foreshortening and things like that. You can change that of the with the 3D model. So you can go again here. Uh, you can go to manga perspective and see how you can exaggerate some things by coming closer to the camera. Uh, you can adjust it as much as you want. It's pretty cool. And another way you can do it is with it. You go to camera and there is perspective. This is like a regular perspective. This is manga perspective. So this one is more like the, like you have a different lens on the camera. Let's say like a fish eye lens. You can kind of make it really extreme. But you know, you can adjust as much as you want. You want to you know, make the pose a little bit more, a little more extreme. You can adjust that. And I, I mean, I don't, I suggest not going too high because then it goes, it's too much. So uh, I go around, at most around 15. I think that's, it looks cool. Uh, but you can go anywhere around there. And you, you should get some cool uh, perspective. Um, yeah, so that you can combine both too. So let's say I want to use like, the camera like that, and then on top of that, I use the manga perspective. You know, that's probably too much, but I, uh, you know, I can still add the manga you know, extreme perspective, perspective and stuff. And the manga perspective is interesting because it changes only a few things. Like you see there, like the hand kind of pops and uh, it's cool. It, it, I don't know how it works, but it does make give it like that manga look. The you know making the hand bigger, it's closer. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I really like that. Um, so let me talk about a little bit about these controls in the bottom now. Um, this one uh, is uh, it's just it's just that like all the it's pretty much this thing. So it's uh, it's like in two places. I don't, I don't know. Well, it's not the same. This is like specifically like the object list. So if you have more characters, they will all show up there. Uh, but you can still find out here, which, uh, you know, so pretty much you don't need that that much. Uh, this one is for different cameras. So I said preset camera angle. So uh, I'm gonna say delete this one. I bring a new character. Um, so this one, it's like a preset camera and then, okay, you see there, it's just a front view. If I want to look from the side, it will be that. You can, depending how you want it, uh, you know, this is a good way to, to get some, you know, different angles like right away. You don't have to move the camera too much. It's already preset so you can, uh, go straight to what you want. Like, okay, close up, three quarter, uh, maybe from the front, or maybe a little bit from the top. So these are pretty cool. I like the, you can quickly go to the camera angle that you want. Uh, this one is kind of just resets uh, on the, well, it resets, for example, if you have the camera here, you click on it and it kind of brings it more to the middle. So you can see the whole thing. Um, and you know how you can go up 
you know, I can drag this character up. You see it's kind of flying. This one will drop it to the ground. So you know, see it goes down. So that's pretty cool. Sometimes the character is flying a little bit. You don't want that. You can go down. Um, this one is for saving. So let's say you make a cool pose. Uh, I have this pose and you want to save it. You can go here, uh, save material. You can give it a name like uh, pose, uh, whatever, test. And then you go here to save it, go to 3D model. You can save it anywhere, but I always like to save it, you know, where it's supposed to be so you can find it easier. Um, so you'll find it here. Oh, it's here. Yeah, I see post test. So I can just add that to say this character. Yeah, so once you make a pose, you can use it and you know adjust it. Like maybe you want it a little different this time, or it's pretty good for that. You can save your own poses and reuse them <clears throat> as much as you want. Um, something else is uh, this thing, the mirror. This is kind of like a mirror. You flip the character, so. Let's see I hit it. Um, see how before the this one, like the left hand is in front. And then if I flip it, now the right hand is in front. Like you can change uh, like the pose like to be the opposite of what it's doing. So that's pretty cool. If you want to, you know, something to look different, let's say I want to uh, another character. And I say this girl pose test. Right, it's the same pose, but then I can mirror it. So they're gonna be, you know, doing like the opposite pose of each other. So it's like the same pose, you just, you know, uh, you can make it look really different like that. Um, this one is to reset. You should reset the pose. Uh, this one resets. We got what the scale in case that uh, the character is bigger and stuff like that. Uh, you can bring it back to normal. And this one, if the if you rotate the character, I think it is. Uh, yeah, you can reset that. Uh, this one is to save the body type. So. If you have your character, you know, save this character. Uh, you can go here and save it. So you don't have to make the character every time. So you can say, uh, I can give it a name, my old girl or something. Girl test, I don't know, some random name. Uh, and then you save it to body type, right? So you can save it there and you know, it will be right there. So when you pick the character, now you can just bring the this one. It will be ready. So you can design different characters and you have them ready. And you can use them whenever. <clears throat> um, this one is the post scanner, uh, which is also here. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing I did before. So you can scan a pose from a picture. And this one, you know, does it's more for like the some other 3D stuff. It doesn't do anything for these characters. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, how you can use those at the bottom part. Um, <clears throat> something else that I like is the the lighting. So, uh, you know, let's, let's use this one. 
have some in. So you see some, you can move the character, the light. All right, okay, this is the old way to do it. Right? The, the new way, uh, I like it better. But, uh, you could go to light source and move it here. And, or you can go to allocate and you have the light there, you move it. So let's say I have this light source and this is a second one, but it, you can't see it. You have to go here to allocate and then turn it on so you can see it. So if you want to have like a two different light source, like one in the front, one in the back, you can do it like that. And you can even change the color to I guess you get a better idea where the light is sitting. So you can say, Oh, the main light is here, and then like the back light is hitting here. So you can use that as a reference when you're you know, drawing. Um, so yeah, it's pretty useful. Like for example, some of these that the like I, I use the, the lighting from the 3D model, like to get a better idea. You know, see here, lighting on the side. You know, it will help you play the shadows better. And and you can experiment, see if something is something that you want, see what lights, uh, what kind of lighting looks better. So I really like that you can experiment, see in different lights. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the controls and stuff like that, how to bring the characters. And then I guess I'll show you a few different like uh, ways to sketch. Like I, uh, I like to let's say I have this character, right? Uh, I can just, I load the opacity and then in a different layer, I start drawing and sketching. So uh, the way I like to sketch is not to go like slow, like try to trace it, it's more like, like how you sketch, like really quickly, like don't worry about making it exact, it's just like a quick line. Um, I just kinda use it to, to know where things go, right? Uh, you know, like the, the main point is like the collarbone and like you say, the arm, the hand to be here. Um, the arm here, and things like that. So, uh, and for example, for the legs, I don't go like, you know, little by little, I just try to do like the whole leg, like go, okay, the legs going this way, really quick. So you sit in a like sketchy way, like, like really quick lines and like exaggerate a little bit. And that's how you can get better, um, to, I mean, it, it will look better because if you go like slower, slower, it will look really stiff and it won't look that good. Um, now let me do a, a little different one. Say, so I'm gonna go, so I do this one. Um, so uh, till they have, let's say I wanna design a character kind of like that, like from the front. Uh, I like to use the character and make it like lower the opacity and then I bring the, this to the symmetrical ruler and you can see there. So I put it in the middle. So whatever I draw is gonna be mirror on both sides. So I kind of just draw like half of the character, make it like uh, it will make it, uh, it will complete the other side for, for me. So I can design like armor and stuff like that, whatever outfit you want. So uh, some tips are pretty much don't draw like, like too close to the character. Like, um, like for example, if we're in armor, the armor is not gonna be like, like, sticking to the character that close. 
you gotta draw it like a little outside. Uh, it's, it's on top of a character. And you know, it's a little uh, thicker and kind of give it like a little volume like that. Like don't, don't put it too close to the character. Um, yeah, so you can just put it like that. And again, like do it really quickly. Like this is still like the sketch, right? You're, you're sketching, like don't worry about making like a perfect line. You, you'll fix that later. Uh, so it's pretty good. You got the, the proportion figure out for you. You don't have to um, think too much about that. So if you're designing a character, you can do that. Um, and you know you can always change like uh, if you want like a cartoony character you can go here and change uh, the head to body ratio that kind of thing so this is really, really good for that like designing characters and uh, see how quick you can just go and And dry characters. Um, yeah, like, uh, well, I guess I'll show you some examples. I already showed you, but, you know, uh, this one, just like, I just went doing the same thing. Um, so using the mirror and then you just pretty much draw whatever like that. Um, uh, another thing is, uh, this one that, that I like a lot is more like for drawing like the silhouette of the character. Uh, I'm gonna go and say the same character. Mm, I'm gonna put it there like sideways. So what you can do is you can hold command and click on it. So select the whole area. And then you can kind of, in a different layer, paste the, the silhouette. So, you know, you got a character, like the shape of the character, and you can just start like, throwing things to, you know, the character has hair, he's wearing some weird armor. You, know, you start adding little random things and then uh, you, know, you can assign different characters like that. Like your brain kind of will want to fill in the blanks and then you can kind of sketch over it. And you know, say, oh, the hair is here and different things like that. So you can use the three models like that. Um, And you can see some of that here. Like I, I just went, copy the silhouette, added a few extra, you know, just random shapes. And then you can kind of draw something, uh, some liner after that and it'll make it easier. Um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the whole thing. I mean, I want to draw a little bit of this character now. So it, the thing is like, it's not like uh, good to, how do I say? This is uh, only like the guidelines, like you, you won't have all the guidelines. So you see that you can barely see where the eyes go. You have to kind of like uh, do that yourself. So you have to kind of just pretend you're like sketching and and you use only the line, the landmarks that it gives you, and you have to, I guess, add your own style. For example, like the eyebrows, I want to make it a little bigger, like higher. Um, and so I, I pretty much go like that, like really messy at first, and then on a different layer, I will go and kind of ignore the three model, and then start drawing here. Like okay, now I have eyes and things like that. Um, uh, 
yeah, so that's, uh, <clears throat> I think that's going to be most of it, though. Uh, uh, um, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> uh, I think that's going to be the whole presentation, and I can answer some questions. Um, um, you guys can let me know. Maybe you can explain some things better or you know, if you want to see some sketching, uh, let me know. All right, thank you very much. Um, we have a few questions uh, for you. Um, cool. For specific things, what, which I would like to, which I would like you to show again. So uh, let's okay. start with uh, something, <clears throat> something uh, easy. Um, could you show again how you get to the four view window? Oh, okay. To look uh, at the, 3D models. Yeah, so the for that you can go to window and then you go down, it says all sides view. Uh, you just click on that and it will show you the different characters. Well, it's the same character in different uh, points of view. Um, okay. Good. I think this is this is something where a lot of people <laughs> were like, where does this come from? Um, <laughs> So um, you showed the post scanner a little bit, which is still a technology preview. Um, can you oh, show yeah. again um, with a post how you did that, like your specific settings for that? Oh, um, it's just like the basic settings. I, I don't know if you can change the settings for it, uh, but let's say I have this character and I just go to post, uh, post scanner is there. Uh, and show this thing here, and then you can choose a pose. I'm gonna choose the same one, so you can see uh, it's this guy kind of jumping over something. Just click it, and uh, it takes. Uh, I I don't know how it works. It it, it kind of it says you need to be connected online and does something and uh, pretty much scans the, the photo and, and it tries to match it to with a three model so uh, <laughs> it's not it's not like a complete exact copy but it's pretty close so then you can adjust yeah. it and things like that it's currently a, a technology preview because it uses like e uh, AI and deep learning from our server so you need to have an online connection um to make use of this this feature um just so you know <laughs> um wonderful i think this is something that's probably really interesting for a lot of people um you showed before how you create the the silhouette for the character with the black and then add additional parts could you show oh, that yeah. again how you made yeah. the selection so um uh, the way i did it i just Hold well. I have. Uh, I'm working on a Mac, so I hold Command and then click uh, here uh, on the character on the layer. I click there and it selects the whole. You can see this little lines is, is everything selected. So uh, then in a new layer, I, I just like fill the black. So you got like the shape of the character. And then I just go with a lasso tool or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just put hair or you know anything like that. I just throw some shapes and if it looks good, then I can use it and stuff. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we had a special request. Um, if you could show how to create a chibi character in the three D model settings. Oh. oh okay. Um, yeah. So the, the Chima, uh, Chibi character, uh, is pretty much here, here where you can change the character and stuff like that. Um, I, I like to make it like, like a, like a kid, like lower this, you can make it more like an adult or like a kid. I would just put it all the way down so you don't show too much muscles and stuff like that. And then the head to body ratio, 
pretty much too like <laughs> really big head um so now that's how you can do it and then you can add a pose let's say um I'm gonna put uh, maybe this one. <laughs> Something like that. You can have like a have a chibi character. Um yeah, um and then it will be like sketching over it. Like okay, something else about the chibi characters is like the head after you have the pose or like the character, the eyes usually are like lower. Like I like to you know, if I, I I don't use this line when I if I make a chibi character, I use one like more in between the nose and the and the eyes. So I, I kind of ignore this line and make a line here because that's kind of where I put the eyes. So I put the eyes around there um, and the head. Yeah, just the head so big that you, you wanna make it more cartoony and stuff like. The eyebrows I put around here. So something like that. That's uh mm. yeah. Um do you usually save your um the the characters you created? And if um, so how how would you do that? Um the characters I used to save them uh well i had a different computer so when i changed i didn't bring them uh to this one but i used to have a lot like here like you see like this one um so the way you can save it is let's say i have this chibi character now yes uh, i can save it I can go uh here no sorry <laughs> here uh and let's say chibi. So and then I'm gonna save it to the 3D body type. Um, so it's, it's gotta be there. Now, now when I go to pick the body type, well, I'm gonna do this one. When I'm gonna go to the body type, you see that you know chibi, and then you have the other ones, the regular ones. So uh, if I just delete this one, I can bring like a normal character and then maybe like a, a chibi character. Um, and I can change the, the same, make them really short. Yeah, so you can have like a chibi character. Like that, kind of. Um, let me see. Yeah, so pretty much it, it will be here after mm -hmm. you save it. Yeah, it will be, you just bring it whenever you need it. Okay. Um, and then we have the complete opposite. Do, can you create like a really muscular character? Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, Those were for the that. <laughs> a chibi <laughs> character and someone really muscly. Um, yeah. For that, I actually like the older the models from before, mm -hmm. this, this one. Um, I'm going to bring in a different layer. I like this one better. Like some, I, I, I don't know why, but it, it has like more muscles. Uh, so you can do the same thing. You can go to the body and then like, you know, bring the muscles off, like kind of extreme. Uh, you can make the arms bigger. I mean, this is kind of too extreme. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, this guy's arms. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. So, um, yeah, I can make it pretty big. Uh, and then you can have the, the body proportions change it too. So, yeah, it's kind of extreme, but. But yeah, I like I like this one. It shows like a lot more of the muscles. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Um. 
Yes. Um, so lastly, um, do you have any la like final final tips for people who use um, the three D models for drawing? Um, yeah. It just uh, it may okay. I think it's really fast, but at first it might be slow. Like because you nobody you know you're gonna you're not gonna be used to it at first, so it might look slow, but uh i just i would say stick to it and um and draw like uh like with quick lines and long lines like don't draw like uh you know trying to match each thing it, it try to just get like the uh you know like the gesture drawing the gesture drawings uh so it just kind of if the legs going that way like that just do like the whole line like uh here do like a curve you know kind of exaggerate the curve um uh, that's pretty much what i would say like exaggerate and try to after after you sketch it let's say I, i'm gonna sketch uh, this character uh like really quickly uh, I like to sometimes delete the, well not delete, just hide the 3D model, and and that that way I can get like a better, uh, uh, more like natural look, because I, I'll be just focusing on my my own sketch, not not the 3D model. So um, yeah, I guess the, the the tip would be to use do it more like sketchy, like faster lines like don't go too slow because it's gonna look uh, a little not dark it's, it's gonna look a little weird if you go slow okay all right um thank you very much i think that's all for the questions for today all right cool all right everyone thank you so much for joining us today uh, I wanted to thank Kendry for taking the time uh, to present uh, all of his uh, findings related to using 3D models and creating characters inside of Clip Studio Paint. Um, if you'd like to see the webinar, we'll be posting it on uh, Salsa's web as well as Graphicsly on YouTube. Um, so please check us out there. Uh, as previously mentioned, we'll also be emailing registrants and attendees with a copy of the webinar. For more information about Kendry and what he's up to, please make sure to follow him on all of his social media below, as you can see. Um, I'm sure he'll be able to answer some more questions and uh, provide some more details related to using 3D models uh, in Clip Studio Paint for your characters. With that, thank you so much, Kendry, and thank you to the audience. Thank you very yeah, much. Th thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Take care. All right.